Hey everyone, I'm Lisa Storm and I'm back as promised with my second video where I want to talk to you about how to be a pro star DM. So I couldn't whittle this down to any less than 13 tips. I've got a lot to say on this topic, so let's just jump right in, okay? Number one. This tip is mostly for new DMs. I think every DM I know has gone through this. I hope that by putting it out there, I can save someone from what seems to be this rite of initiation for all D&D DMs. So you've just gotten a group together, they've agreed to play D&D with you, and you are excited. You are going to want to jump into your preparation with both feet. That is fantastic. That is great. There's one thing you need to understand though. Realistically, especially if your players are new as well, they're going to have a lot on their plate at the start of the campaign. They're going to be figuring out the rules. They're going to be learning to get comfortable with their character and with role playing. And they are not going to be able to give your hard work the, the appreciation and the attention that it deserves. You may also be surprised to find that not all players want to play as seriously as you do. If you're working really hard on a campaign with a very complex story and wanting to integrate your character plots and making beautiful maps and everything, you may be shocked to find that your players just want to have a good time and don't really want to have to think too hard about a story or anything. So A, it's important to be clear about the type of game that you want to play at your table, and B, it's important to be realistic and set your sights low for the first part of your campaign. When I start a new campaign, I like to do a little kind of starter area where we have relatively simple mechanics and really just a place where the players and I can explore each other, figure out you know what our likes and dislikes are, learn mechanics, whatever the whatever the case may be. Just don't think, if this is your first time, don't think that your efforts are necessarily going to be appreciated. <laughs> Number two, don't take on too much responsibility. Now again, it's really exciting when you get a group together to play a D&D campaign and you really want everything to go smoothly. So I think that there is a tendency for DMs to want to try to take on more responsibility than they should for the players at the table and away from the table. If you try to take on too much, you will eventually break your brain you will eventually succumb to the stress and you won't have a good time. So the very thing that you were trying to prevent, you will bring on. Let's make this perfectly clear. The party is responsible for the party. The players are responsible for their characters. You are responsible for the universe. You cannot know every rule about every character. You cannot be mediator for every minor squabble for the party. You have to clearly know what your boundaries are, what you're responsible for, and delegate as needed. Another important point on this subject is that you are not required to invite all feedback. Getting a little bit of constructive feedback sometimes is great. It helps you improve as a DM, it helps your players feel more engaged in the story and more engaged in the campaign and everything. However, do not invite players to bitch and moan and complain about every little thing that goes wrong or isn't to their standards or whatever, that can become very stressful very quickly. It is okay, you do want feedback as a DM, but it is okay to say, I want feedback, but I don't want that much feedback. <laughs> Number three, don't play with jerks, for real. No D&D game is better than a stressful, toxic D&D game. If someone is making your life difficult in your campaign, the first thing you need to do is just talk to them. Maybe they don't have any idea that they are being aggravating or irritating or whatever. And if they respect that, if they respect you saying, I need my space here, back off, 
been great. You've successfully communicated with a member of your group and hopefully from here on in things will get better. If they do not respect your request, if they insist on being on your ass or in your face all the time, or if they insist on making the other players miserable, then they need to go. Keep in mind too that once again, you are not the party's babysitter. Any decisions to make someone leave your table, any decisions to ask someone to stop behaving a certain way really should be made as a group and the problem should be approached as a group. Not everything needs to fall on your shoulders. But anyway, just go ahead and just don't play with jerks. That's not D&D. &D. Number four, embrace the awkward. Maybe you've been watching a lot of Critical Role lately and in your mind you're envisioning that your table is going to look just like theirs and your characters will have such witty banter and meaningful exchanges and everything is going to go so smoothly. The reality is role play is awkward as fuck at first. <laughs> There's no other way to say that. It is awkward. You need to embrace that awkwardness. You need to know that sometimes you are going to have no response for something someone said in conversation. You need to know that sometimes you are going to be left staring there awkwardly at your player, none of you really knowing what to say until finally you're forced to break character just to get your point across or to collect yourself. This is what happens when you start role playing. It is supposed to be awkward. Embrace the feeling, let it happen. It will go away eventually, hopefully, maybe. <laughs> Don't hold yourself up to a standard of a Laura Bailey or a Sam Regal because you're just not gonna start there. Number five, watch your players. I'm very specifically using the verb watch here because it is really important for a DM not only to listen to the suggestions and the feedback that their players give to them, but also to watch to see where their players come to life, where their what parts of the adventure their players are enjoying. If someone's leaning in and getting really excited every time they have to solve a puzzle, maybe that person really enjoys puzzle solving. If someone is does the same for battle, then that player really likes battle. While it's not, again, your responsibility to make sure that everyone at the table has fun, a good DM will pay attention to what his, his or her players like or dislike and try to sprinkle that into the game, try to incorporate it once in a while, just to keep their players engrossed. And of course, different players will have different tastes. Keep an eye on your players, watch them, see if you can figure out what really makes them tick. Number six, always say yes. This is the first rule of improv, and really, what is D&D if not a giant, wonderful game of improvisation? I hate that word. Saying yes definitely doesn't mean that you need to be agreeable to everything or that you suddenly need to give every NPC the answer to every question that the party may ask. What it actually means really is that if you're going to shut a door, make sure that you open a window for them. Let me give you an example. Your party on an adventure finds a nifty little vial of some mysterious liquid. They would like to know the properties of that liquid so they go to the nearest town and they ask the innkeeper if she knows what this vial is. There's a right and a wrong way to respond to this. The wrong way would be to say, I have no idea. That just shut a door without opening a window. The correct way to respond to that question would be, I don't know anything about that. I'm not an alchemist. Do you see how that response shut a door, opened a window? 
Now your players think, well, maybe I should be looking for an alchemist to ask. Doors and windows aren't just something that are available to you in role-playing interactions. If you are setting up puzzles and your players are just walking endlessly in circles with no idea what to do to solve the puzzle, you need to try to open a door or a window for them. You can do this in any number of ways. You could ask someone to make a, a random, a, an ability check to find a clue. You can have a, an event happen that might point to something. Maybe an NPC walks in and says something relevant or whatever the case may be. Just don't leave your players walking in circles. Always, always leave them an open door or an open window. Number seven, look stupid. I recently started a new campaign with a group of relatively unknown players. To our very first session, I wore a unicorn pegasus onesie and my message to everyone right from the moment they walked in the door is, I'm prepared to look absolutely fucking stupid. I hope you are too. D&D <laughs> &D is more fun the more you are prepared to look stupid. That might sound like I'm encouraging you not to take the game seriously. I am not doing that. I am just telling you that you might look dumb and that's okay. Do that accent that you can't do well. Make that voice that you're not sure how it's gonna come out. Scrunch your face. Just try your very best regardless of what the outcome may be. Don't be afraid to look stupid. The more invested you are in your role playing, the more interested and engrossed your players are gonna be and the more they are going to want to respond likewise with some hardcore role play. So when your gang walks in with their little vial of mystery liquid and asks your innkeeper about it, don't just say, she says she doesn't know. Scrunch your face, look stupid, get ready. I don't know that, I'm not an alchemist. I guess this is a very decrepit, old, scrunched up, huddled innkeep. That's all right. <laughs> Number eight, don't make things too easy or too hard. The threat of failure should be real in a D&D &D game. That's how you keep your players excited and engaged. Now that doesn't mean that it should be the most common result of their decisions, but it should be there. You don't wanna be killing your player characters every five minutes. Obviously that would be very demoralizing and very frustrating. But on the other hand too, don't give your players every advantage. Don't try to hand them things. It is not fun to play a game where you feel like you're just being handed the answer all the time. The way to really keep a good balance of the difficult and the easy and make sure that you walk that line in between that's really fun for your players is to first of all, plan carefully for successes and failures, and then be neutral when you are sitting in your chair playing the game. Don't give a player advantage because you want them to succeed on something. Let them fail. If they roll badly and they don't meet the DC that you've set in preparation for this event, they fail that check. Think of something else. That threat, that sense that you could fail at any time is really what keeps players in the game. Number nine, don't let the power go to your head. DMs are players with a different role. You are not above anyone at the table. You are not below anyone at the table. You are just a player. Get over yourself. It's okay for you to be wrong. It's okay for you not to know things. It's okay for you to get answers from your players. All of that is okay. You are all equals at the table. No one has fun at a D&D table with a smug looking DM at the head. Number 10, reward intelligent and creative ideas. Let's say you set up a problem and in your head you see the, your player characters solving it in one of 
half a dozen ways. And one of your players comes up with a solution that you never would have anticipated and that will take you into territory that you were not prepared to go into. I know that your reflexive action may be to shut that down <laughs> and stay within the bounds of where you're comfortable, but I think it's really important to encourage not game breaking, you know, trying to get around the rules kind of thinking, but creative, intelligent, logic, logical ideas. The whole reason that D&D &D is the wonderful game that it is, is because there are no boundaries. You can approach any problem from any direction. You can come up with any solution. And it's really important that you facilitate that kind of attitude at your table, even if it means that you're gonna have to scramble a little bit to try to keep up. <laughs> if you are playing a pre-made campaign or one of the official adventures, this does not change. The creators, the book, whatever, will not be able to predict how every single player in the universe will decide to solve a problem. It'll give you a couple of options and you will find often that your players just go completely left of the description, go in a completely different direction. You need to go off the book then. It's often obvious to players actually when they don't really have creative control of the story and you're trying to railroad them into a certain approach to something or a certain way of thinking about things. And that really can take away from the D&D experience. I think it's really important for players to feel like they need to engage their brains to find solutions to problems. Number 11, describe for all the senses. I'm gonna give you two descriptions of the same scene. I want you to think about which is more effective. You walk into a large room. The stone walls are coated in a thick dust. The floor is uneven. Or you step into the room, its furthest reaches obscured by shadow. A thick layer of dust is settled on the walls and floor and tickles at your nose. With each step you take, you can feel the pressure of the uneven ground. The silence is thick. You use all of your senses to perceive your surroundings. When you walk into a room, you are not just using your eyes, you are using your eyes and your ears and your nose and your touch and your sense of taste. All of these things contribute to your perception of your reality. When you are describing a scene for your players, it will always be more effective if you can involve more than one of the senses in that description. Now, of course, you don't want to go overboard because there is a fine line between a, a description that's detailed and engrossing and a description that's just really, really long. Maybe for each item that you are describing, just throw in how it affects one of their senses other than vision. I think you'll find that your players will have a much easier time being there in the moment with you. Number 12, get your point across as much as possible in the game. If you want to encourage or discourage an action or a line of thinking, it is always, always better to try to get that across through some means in the game rather than to metagame and say, hey, don't do that. Let's say that your players are headed to a destination and they have taken the completely wrong road. They are going in the opposite direction. <laughs> Instead of pulling all the players out of the game to say, hey guys, you're going the wrong way. You, it's really much better if you can find a way to relay that information in the game. Maybe they hit a roadblock, maybe they hit a sign on the road, maybe they encounter an NPC who can tell them that they're on the wrong path. Whatever the case may be, it's always better if you can get your point across creatively rather than pulling your players out of the game. Let's say that your players are distracted and laughing and they've completely lost their attention span for the story. And this will happen at every table. Don't worry about it. Instead of just saying, hey guys, pay attention. It is much better if you can pull them back into the game 
mentally and physically by engaging them. Maybe you make a very obvious dice roll behind your DM screen. Maybe they are suddenly ambushed by a team of mind flayers. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, if you can pull them back into the game without leaving the game to bring them in, you're going to find that your players have a much easier time staying engaged with you. Number 13, keep the game moving. If you are in a relaxing sort of area in your game and not much is going on and a rule comes up that you're not really sure about and you think you can look that rule up in less than 10 seconds, then by all means go ahead and look it up. You know exactly where it is in the player's handbook or whatever, go ahead. However, do not make your players sit there watching you flip through a book or watching you scroll through Google on your phone while you're looking for an answer. That is not the way that D&D is intended to be played. So obviously, if we're not going to make our players sit there while we're, you know, having a shopping day in the town, we definitely shouldn't leave our players sitting there watching us while they're in the middle of a, an intense heated battle or something. If a rule comes up in the battle and you don't know the answer and you don't know where to find the answer right now, then you need to make a call. You need to be comfortable making a call. Know that even if your call is wrong, it's the right call because it was the call that kept the game moving. The rules of D&D are not there to stifle and slow down your game. They are there just to provide a framework for players and DMs to interact with their universe. Do not think that you should be restricted to the rules just because they're written out. It is more important that your game keeps moving. There's 13 tips. I have one more for you. Now this may seem reminiscent of my first video for those who were lucky enough to see it, but my bonus tip for you to be a pro star DM is have fun. If you manage to follow every other tip in this video, but you can't have fun at your table, your players aren't going to have fun with you. This is not a business meeting. It's a get together with your friends. Have fun. I promise you, your game will go much better that way. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful in some way. If you did, why don't you go down and hit that like button and let me know. Leave any comments or questions you have in the comment section. I really like to engage with the community here. And I release videos every Thursday. If you would like to be notified every time I release a new video, hit the subscribe button. That would help me out a lot. So next week, I want to talk to you all about how to create an open world, homebrew, Mercer-esque type of campaign that works for you and your players and is a lot easier to manage as a DM than you might think. So please come back next week. I'm really looking forward to seeing you. Until then, love ya.